to welcome everybody to our keynote panel discussion on empowering STEM leaders. The realm of STEM, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics in the context of the fire industry has historically seen a representation gap. As with many sectors within STEM, there is an underrepresentation of certain demographics, notably women, which is our focus for today. While the fire industry is pivotal in ensuring safety and security, it continues to grapple with the challenges of recruiting the next generation of leaders and experts. The modern landscape points to a pressing need for upskilling as technological advancements demand an even higher calibre of expertise. As we steer into the future, uh, that calls for more inclusive, diverse and equitable dynamic leadership, bridging that employment gap becomes ever more crucial. So this keynote panel discussion intends to shed some light on these very facets of the industry, inviting a dialogue that can pave the way for change. So this panel will discuss a variety of topic areas. Uh, we'll be addressing and overcoming underrepresentation in STEM within the fire industry, analysing strategies for upskilling and attracting the next generation, and exploring how we can build meaningful connections with women and young people as potential employees and customers, as well as looking ahead to the future of the industry. So I'm pleased to say that I'm joined here by a number of expert panellists, so thank you all for taking the time to speak with me. I will now go around the room and ask each of you to introduce yourself. Um, so Holly, if we could start with you. Hi, I'm Holly Donovan from Skills for Security. Um, I work as a partnership manager um, at Skills for Security um, and we deliver apprenticeships in the fire and security industry. So um, I work closely with employers um, and with stakeholders and sponsors um, to help bridge the uh, gap within the skill, the skills gap within the industry um, and uh, bring on more apprentices. Brilliant, thank you. And coming to you next, Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Smith. I'm the Strategic Fire Safety Manager for Gen 2 Group. Um, my entire career I've worked within the fire industry, starting off working for the Fire and Rescue Service and also working for the NHS doing fire safety. Um, I volunteer for uh, Women Talking Fire, which is a committee which is dedicated to increasing the women in within the fire industry. Perfect, thank you. And last but not least, Katie, we come to you. Hello there. Um, yeah, I'm Katie Lowe. I am a fire engineering recruitment consultant. I've been doing this for 17 years. Um, I also volunteer for the Women Talking Fire Committee, which I enjoy very much um, with some lovely like minded women. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here today. Well, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you offering your uh, expertise and knowledge in this area and appreciate your time because I know you're all very busy. I wanted to start with a general question to kick off this panel discussion. So what are the biggest challenges facing the fire industry when it comes to STEM subjects and the younger generation? Uh, Katie, if we could come to you first, that would be great. Sure. Um, for me, it's a shortage of female role models, which creates a barrier for women to relate to or aspire to. Um, I think there's some research that only 10% of the IFE registered engineers are women. So we've still got a long way to go to 50%. Um, and for me, the only way to get there is to upskill our existing workforce, um, bring in new personnel, engineers, and we need to really need to focus on this. Um, at the moment, we're disregarding 50% of the work workforce with visibility via STEM. Maybe we can really look to change this and increase our female population. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And 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 when you start talking about the statistics in this area, it's actually quite um quite surprising. I mean, when you think of the overall fire industry with only seven percent of women um making up, you know, that entire industry. Um, and traditionally, obviously, that's come from, you know, a lot of firefighters coming from that area mm -hmm. um, into fire safety. Um, but it, it, it definitely sheds some light that there are some big strides that we need to take towards kind of completely diversifying our workforce. And that starts yeah. across the whole entire chain from, from, you know, right from recruitment and entering the industry all the way up to management. Um, Laura, I would really appreciate your input on this question as well, if we can come to you. I think, yeah, we're at a really pivotal point at the moment you know as you were saying a lot of the people within the industry have come from historic roles within the fire service which historically was predominantly men and i think that's reflected in the industry today 
there are a lot of really strong female role models within the industry, um, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And I think we just need to build on that to make sure that the younger generation are seeing this as a role that they can do. It's the age old say saying, if you see somebody like you doing something, you feel like you can do it too. And it's about making sure that we have those people within those roles and we're really transparent with it rather than just having the 7% hidden away somewhere. Mm. No, definitely. You need to be able to have people in your, your organisation that you can relate to and that you can aspire to, um, whether that's to inspire your, your career path trajectory or to inspire you to enter into an industry or to accept a role in a new organisation. Um, so I think that, that's very true what you said, Laura. Thank you. And Holly, have you got anything that you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I'd just uh, like to add, obviously, as well, um, that there is just a lack of awareness. Like when you start in schools and colleges um, and even down to like career events at school and colleges, this is an industry that's not necessarily directed towards um, you, you, your females and uh, my minority groups. Um, so, yeah, it's just about obviously getting the campaigns out there and making it more of a, more of a, because it is an attractive industry. Obviously, I've been, I've been in it for 12 years now um, and it's an industry that I, I, I don't really ever want to leave because it is so, um, it is such a good industry mm. um, and we do need more females in it. So I think you need to start from the beginning in terms of your schools and your colleges and make more yeah. awareness I know when I was younger, it was, oh, you can go and do hairdressing or oh, you can go and do. It was always very female orientated, whereas now it's, you know, what about the fire, what about the fire industry? Um, and like you said, Laura, like even down to um, like the fire brigade, fire brigade and um, yeah. So you just you, you don't see that many women. And uh, it's a shame, really, because it is such a good industry for women to be a part of. Definitely agreed. And I think traditionally, like you said, um, the the different types of experiences and education offered for skill based um, careers were very much segregated between, you know, that the boys at school could go off and, and do, um, you know, the, your, your trade, your trade kind of associated roles and your women, like you said, you know, air hostessing and uh, hairdressing, all those very uh, stereotypical and gender norm um, uh, roles. Um, whereas now we're seeing in the education sector in particular um, a change when it comes to what uh, education is offered, even down to catering to the different types of learning types and abilities of young people, um, whether it's, you know, you, you've got your new T levels or apprenticeships, are, uh, you know, hugely a lot more widely accepted now than previously. You were like, oh, I don't want to do an apprenticeship role. I'd rather go to university. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, actually, you, you've got both. I mean, my wife's just completed a two year, you know, uh, uh, and a uh, apprenticeship and you know she's been in a, a lead role in the council for for years and is you know coming up to you know coming up to mid 30s so um so you know apprenticeships are for all all ages and all brackets and all people trying to enter into into new types of industries but it's about creating that representation for the fire industry and also the security industry because they're very closely aligned um as a career path and generating that ability to actually see that there is a career tra trajectory there um and holly just just staying with you for a second from your yeah. vantage point and obviously it's skills for security. Um, are there any initiatives that have particularly been successful in upskilling women or, or just, you know, the general younger generations for roles in the fire industry and how are apprenticeships changing that educational landscape? Yeah, so um, we did, unfortunately, the funding has stopped within, um, within the uh, industry, to be honest, but uh, with traineeships, our, our flagship apprenticeship is the Fire Emergency Security Systems Technician Apprenticeship, and that's seen huge growth over the past few years with uh, 670 enrolled in the last 12 months. And additionally, we're seeing more and more women join the apprenticeship programme, which is something we're actively encouraging. Um, and we'll be exhibiting at three national apprenticeship shows between now and the end of February, which will be selling the benefits of a career in fire and security um, industry to a whole new audience. Um, and apprenticeships are giving young people a great alternative to pursuing costly um, university education and um, you're earning while you're learning and with the um, with the advantage of you not getting university debt as well. Mm, definitely. Mm, and also yeah. the, the practical learning side. 
um you know it's, it's very it's it's a it's it can be easy for a lot of people to learn the theory of a certain subject yes. but actually putting that into practice um is totally different and you might absolutely adore the theory of fire safety regulations um but actually when it comes to being you know a building control surveyor or a fire risk assessor or anything like that um you might find that actually the practicality of going around and you know checking these things aren't for you um, or the other way around. Maybe you find it difficult to get to grips with the theory, but in practice, you can actually relate that theory to what you're doing and what you're visually, you know, taking part in. Um, so I think, you know, that that kind of stimulating the industry in that way is is really good, and especially branch out to construction as well. All these different industries are becoming so closely aligned now, um, and especially with with, you know, with the new, you know, we mentioned before we started, but with the new changes and amendments to, you know, the Building Safety Act and mm -hmm. all of those different changing regulation landscape um fire you know fire safety professionals are getting a lot more integrated into the construction side and you know the pre-development side of things as well so it's good to see that they're starting to align further as well um yes. and laura on the uh, on the same theme have you faced any challenges personally in the industry and, and how do you believe that organizations can alleviate some of these for the coming generation um yeah, I think I think a lot of the challenges um, I've faced have really been about my gender and my age. If I had a pound for every time someone said, you don't look like you work in the fire industry, I'd have retired a long time ago. The dream. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. I think a lot of people have this preconception of what you should look like. And it, and it is Back to what I was saying, I think it's because a lot of the people are, have come from the fire service. Now, I'm not saying that's the wrong thing because obviously I worked in the fire service, but the fire service was predominantly, you know, ex-military. You know, they joined the fire service and then they've retired and they've come out. And it has generally been old, older male figures within the fire industry. But, you know, that has been one of the challenges as well as I think the fire industry now is getting a lot of people from different backgrounds and predominantly again the challenges are faced as well you were never a firefighter and it's about education outside of the industry as well that you don't need to have been a firefighter to do to do the roles that I do you know you don't need to be a firefighter to work within the fire industry it's a lot broader than that is I've always said that fire safety is the forgotten cousin of the construction world you know, everyone just sort of thinks it's one of those subjects that they sweep to the side. But I think recently it is becoming more to the forefront. And I think a lot of young people will see that, especially, you know, after Grenfell, it will become more prevalent. And I think a lot of universities are starting to teach fire safety within your structural courses, within your building courses. And that is gaining a lot more interest from people. And I think that's only a good thing. No, definitely. Um, and I think I think you're right. I think fire safety is becoming top of the agenda in a lot of places in, in just general conversation and with government. Um, so the raising awareness of the industry in general, not just the opportunities in the industry, but um, as a whole is it, definitely you know progressing, and that that's great. And um, and Katie coming to you next. So KL Connections, aids businesses and strategic networking. Um, in your experience, how can networking help to bridge the representation gap in STEM within the fire industry? Um, yeah, I suppose introducing girls to STEM topics at an early, earlier age. Um, so going into primary schools um, and, you know, perhaps, you know, they do the, the parents, what do your parents do for a living day when they come in? And, you know, my dad's a doctor or a dentist. And actually, perhaps you could bring your mum in and say, my mum's a fire engineer. Um, I think that would be fantastic and a real awareness. Um, and motivate them to study, um, to study maths and science. Um, from, from an early age, tell them of other accomplishments, others, other women's accomplishments in, in STEM. So it's really sort of encouraging, empowering for them. Um, finding ways of um, getting a sponsor um, or, or, or a, more of a mentor to help them along the way. So that sort of helps empower them, bring, you know, as we were saying before, bring them forward. Um, and obviously these apprenticeship programs now are just amazing. So um, there's some fire safety ones actually for at uh, Birmingham University. I think Laura, is that right? And um, mm -hmm. and uh, as well, isn't it? UCLan's just started the apprenticeship yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you know for me exciting um, and starting to sort of bridge that gap. Um, yeah. 
hopefully that's oh, definitely and um, um, and, and on the theme of networking and mentorship, um, like you said, how I'm going to ask a question to the panel now because I think mentorship is quite a big theme in this area. But how does yeah. mentorship play a crucial role in empowering our younger workforce? Um, so perhaps, not, you know, Laura, I'll come to you first. Yeah, no, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> you, you know, when I first joined the fire service, I was given a mentor. And the person that was my mentor was a lady who'd been in the fire service for years. She, I was younger than her children when I joined and she really took me under her wing and I was so privileged because she was so knowledgeable, she was fantastic. You know, everyone else in the office would stop to listen to what she said because she was so knowledgeable. And there was other strong females within there as well that, you know, really supported me. And I found that working in that environment was absolutely fantastic. There was a lot of strong male characters as well within there that helped me out. But just having somebody that you, I could sort of see myself going on to be helped me out absolutely loads. You know, it was just absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I've left the fire service now but I still stay in touch with those women because there was such a big impact to me and I would not be sat where I am today without them. And I think that's what mentorship brings yeah. to the fire industry. You know, it gives you that, oh, that can be me in the future and it, it becomes achievable. And not only that, it's somebody that you can then talk to, you can be open and truthful with. And I think that is just exactly what you need at a young age. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And um, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, and also, I think the, the the not just the knowledge of the industry and the role that they can impart on you, but the knowledge of other aspects of the industry that you might not have even considered. I mean, there's so many different parts of any industry that um, you, you don't know about and um, mm -hmm. and you don't even consider a career in. So you might, you know, enter into one side of the industry, talk to somebody absolutely phenomenal who, who mentors you and goes, actually I know about this you know this job role coming I think you'd be really great it's in xyz you know so I think networking is such a powerful tool and if you can't if you haven't been offered you know a mentor in the organization that you're in seek one out there's so many fantastic women men um all, all gender there's all, di all diverse in the industry at the moment that are, are looking to mentor people and associations that are doing the same thing as well. And LinkedIn as well. We're, we're very lucky that we're in such a, um, uh, a technological landscape when it comes to, you know, our ability to connect with people. You know, LinkedIn, I've seen, has, has created you know, huge movements when it comes to um, diversifying industries. Um, so, yeah, definitely encourage people to look out and, and see what mentorship programs there are um, and see how they can how they can get on board and, and talk to people, you know. Um, Holly, um, can I come to you and get your get your input on uh, yeah. the importance of mentorship? Yeah, I would definitely say, obviously, it's very, very important. I know from my past, like I say, I started um, in the industry 12 years ago. And to be honest, um, the mentors that actually we like come up in my in my mind are actually uh, more male than female um however we have um like you know gaining the confidence but a, a couple of uh, females like that do spring to mind um was when i was leaving my first the first um employer within the industry um due to people not believing in me not saying that you can you can go far and um, etc um, and then the one female did uh, basically take me under her wing and um, I tried to leave the industry um, and then she found me a job within the industry again and I actually came back and I'm really glad I did because obviously it has um, made me grow as a person but um, these days like since I've been at Skills for Security I've only been here for 18 months but I'm getting a lot more female mentors I'm learning a lot more about there are like committees like yourself Katie like yourself Laura you, you're part of the fire mm -hmm. the fire committee um women in fire sorry committee um yeah. and I did come to uh, women in fire last year as well and it was just so lovely to see um from a new perspective because yes I've been in the industry years but I've never been open to so many opportunities than more recently 
um, and just seeing so many women being empowered by other women in the same room and I have done the same in women in security as well like I am obviously with me being in fire and security I am seeing it from both sides and it's just amazing to see the empowerment and like you say how many mentors that are actually out there so I would definitely I would definitely say if they haven't if you haven't got a mentor please get one because me being having to get so far um yes with male, male mentors that have been absolutely amazing but obviously I've not had the opportunities um given that these new mentors of mine are giving me these days no, thank you, Holly, and and agree. And I think you raise a really good point as well on male allyship. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about the benefits of having, you know, female mentors and someone that we can relate to and aspire to be like and see, oh, that could be me. Um, but just as important as that is, and that is, you know, I, I don't want to you know, dampen the importance of that. I think that's incredibly crucial. But we are in a very male dominated industry. So it's down also to our male colleagues and peers to also promote um that diverse workforce as well and there's a there's a there's so many people that are uh, you know shouting about it um and helping on that front as well um so thank you holly and uh, katie lastly we come to you as well sure um it's a bit different for me i suppose um i have in recruitment it's competitive so <laughs> i don't really i don't really speak to anyone else particularly but what i do love is the women talking fire committee it's you know we really champion each other and it's amazing and you know i often go to them actually for advice and and talking um and for me mentoring is exactly what the girls said that you know all that resonates um it's about developing and empowering um each other even you know mm-hmm. um and actually creates a valuable connection between the youth you know the the, the the younger younger engineer coming in and and more and more experienced so that's that's that can both bring things to each other um they can also help expand their social network understand understand better how to become successful in their own terms um and reduces them to be um you know reduces them of becoming unhappy <laughs> Mm-hmm. Day, hooray for the company so, um yeah. yeah well thank you katie um i really appreciate that input and uh, moving on to our next theme of diversity um a diverse workforce offers a whole range of benefits to businesses teams and the broader community like you've just like you've just highlighted there and it fosters a rich blend of perspectives experiences um and skills that can drive innovation creativity and, and problem solving and diversity often leads to more robust decision making processes and the challenges you know group thought um, and promotes a broader understanding of global markets and customer bases. Um, in addition, obviously, includes work, uh, an inclusive work environment also tends to attract and retain top talent and, and boost employee satisfaction and engagement. So, Laura and Katie, as we've established, you're both Women Talking Fire Committee members. Um, how is the organisation helping to shape the fire industry today when it comes to diversity, equity, you know, equality and inclusion? Uh, Laura, I don't know, perhaps we want to go for you first. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. Um, so the whole the whole ethos behind Women Talking Fire is to create diversity within the workforce. You know, we are trying to promote what the work we do. Everyone on the committee comes from a different background. So, like obviously, as I said, I've come from a fire safety background. Katie is from a recruitment background. You know, we've got people who are solely from fire engineering backgrounds, and it's about doing what we said earlier it's about making people realize there's more to the fire industry than just these set boxes because i think if you ask somebody what they think of the fire industry they will say it's the fire service or it's a fire engineer they don't realize there's a whole host of roles in between all of that as well so we're there to promote all the different roles we're also there to promote you know support and leadership skills with women you know supporting them with their softer skills in life you know we're all about improving confidence and getting women within the industry and to have that mentorship as well with each other so we can support each other through the industry Um, It's not just women as well. Men are welcome to join if they wish. It's just about making sure everyone is there to create an equal, equitable workforce and to make sure the industry is truly represented and it's not just how people perceived that it was. Definitely. Thank you. And, And Katie, back to you. 
Yes, I mean, she's answered brilliantly. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose like for me, our vision is to raise awareness and visibility in the fire industry. Um, and it, as, as Laura said, it's not just engineers, it's across the whole sector, you know, all fire safety professionals. Um, we run conferences. We've got a technical conference coming up, by the way, plug, plug, um, November the 16th in Leeds um, with some fantastic keynote speakers. Um, we've got a LinkedIn um, group, forum, haven't we, <laughs> network? I think there's about 500 members now, Laura. Thanks, um, yeah, and they and we, we it's, as Laura said, it's, it's for support, advice, um, answering questions, and just being there for each other, really, and just um, in, in empowering and, and championing, championing. Yeah. Thank you. And and Holly, on the same subject, in terms of fire safety, how crucial is it for companies to integrate diversity strategies uh, in their teams and recruitment to better address the diverse challenges they face? They face not us, face. <laughs> Yeah, very crucial. Um, obviously, um, a, di a diverse workforce allows us to integrate and become closer to our communities. So if our local communities trust us, we're better, better able to gain their cooperation when we offer vital fire safety advice. Uh, some of the most vulnerable people in society come from diverse backgrounds um, and we need to understand their lifestyles in order to safeguard them against the risk of fire. So we need to what can we do? We um, we can target marketing. We can do targeted mar marketing, sorry. So um, target groups that receive few, few, fewer applications, uh, such as women and those from ethnic minority groups. Um, workshops, we can dispel myths about working in the industry and uh, giving candidates a good idea of what to expect from the job and the recruitment process and help build the confidence needed to apply. Um, inclusivity really can improve relationships as well between the fire, fire, and safe, fire safety industry and other companies and organisations. Um, by having females, it's um, familiar, familiarity and building relationships can gain from having more inclusion um, and it offers increased opportunity in the sector. No, definitely. And I think I think you're right. There's there's so many different people in an organization that you can learn from, no matter what level you are. I mean, we have a we have an apprentice in our office who um probably puts more ideas on the table than anyone else um in, in the in the organization. And and we completely learn from them. I mean, half of our strategies are based off of off of an idea from an apprentice, whereas previously it'd be like Oh, don't don't listen to an to an apprentice because they're young and naive and don't know what the industry is or don't know what the organisation is. Um, when actually that that uh, concept and that bias around the different people in the organisation is changing, um, and it is you know changing the perspectives and the the direction that a business can go in. Uh, Laura, I see your hand up. What would you like to add? Oh, sorry. I was just about to say, you know, obviously the the fire industry as a whole, you know, if you look at the average age, it's it's not a young industry. You know, we need to start diversifying, otherwise it's going to die out. You know, there won't be those skill sets. And I think what we've got to realise is there's so much experience held within the industry now that needs to be passed down. And without mentorship and apprenticeship, that's not going to happen. And we can't afford for it not to happen. So we need to desperately diversify now. Otherwise, we're going to lose a whole skill set that's existing at the moment. Definitely wise words there. And um, and especially like, like we said earlier, the 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 competency culture that we're in at the moment with all of these changing regulations and competency requirements. Um, there's a lot of people out there who have a whole foundation of skills and knowledge that may not reach certain, you know, skill criteria in terms of competency. Um, they don't have a, you know, a, a piece of paper to hang on the wall to demonstrate it. But actually that knowledge can really help um people trying to 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 grow in that area and to and to you know establish their competence in the industry and to, and to rise up um so yeah de definitely definitely um, wise words there and um the, the future of inclusion diversity in stem like i feel like we've established particularly in the fire industry looks quite promising and transformative there's still some you know large strides for us that we need to make and um but that have already been established um as the significance of diverse perspectives becomes more evident
evidence STEM fields related to the fire industry are actively working to kind of shatter those barriers and increase representation of underrepresented groups. Um, initiatives, like we've said, are, are being put out um, in place to attract and, and um, young people into the industry um, and to progress their routes in the career path and mentorship and retain individuals from various backgrounds, genders, ethnicities, abilities, etc. Um, so, Laura, sorry, I'm going to come to you again. Um, Gen 2 Group is, is known for a, a quite a holistic approach to housing and safety. And uh, the, the theme of a holistic approach is something that's quite present at the moment in both the fire and security industry. So how do you perceive the role of, of STEM leaders in shaping the future of, of fire safety within housing projects and the wider context of a holistic approach? I think it touches on the themes that I've already touched on, you know, mm historically I think a lot of people within the roles that I sit in you know a role from a very similar background but I do think it's diversifying now you know if you look at the requirements of the building safety act it's having to diverse the housing industry is having to look at bringing other people in so that we can you know comply with the building safety act you know get those people in a post and all these people bring different skill sets with them which is only going to diversify the the who we have within the housing sector at the moment you know i've i've seen a massive change with it the four years that i've been within the housing sector and it's really fantastic to see again i feel like a Gen 2, I'm in a really great opportunity here. We've got a fantastic team that I work for. You know, the our manager, she's absolutely brilliant, absolutely fantastic, has got a really clear vision forward of, of where we need to get to. And I'm quite happy to say, you know, that is about diversifying, you know, making sure that we, we have the right people in the right role, however that may look. You know, we've got no preconceptions on who we should have in a role whatsoever. And I think everyone is on this change. And I think, you know, we're only going to see absolute massive changes coming forward as the next generation come into the employment world. Definitely. And um, and Holly, in terms of skills for security, um, what what is the organisation doing to help kind of create career pathways or kind of open um, the opportunities of the fire industry for for young people? Yeah, um, a lot to be honest, we're uh, we like I said before, we are going towards the national apprenticeship shows and directing um, our target audience to the uh, the younger generation um but we work closely with employers um, and we actually do hold a bit of a recruitment service so um if an employer doesn't necessarily have an apprentice but wants an apprentice we can we have a talent acquisition manager who works closely with myself um, and she goes out and looks for uh, applicants for uh, apprenticeships and then we basically partner them with the um the employers and bring them on board and uh, we have apprenticeships and um, cohorts every two months as well so it's not that like once september goes that's the end uh, for another year we're constantly bringing on new cohorts and uh, we've just seen our biggest uh, cohort start in september with 130 uh, apprentices which was absolutely amazing to see um, and we are talking engineers so your fire engineers um, and We've got five or six uh, female engineers, which was absolutely incredible to see. And um, it'll be nice to see them go uh, work their way through the apprenticeship. Um, and it is really rewarding when you do see, obviously, especially young people, but also females. Um, yeah, and believe it or not, there are actually um, more, more, more mature apprentices coming on board these days as well. So I think from COVID, a lot of people are reskilling and uh, rethinking their career paths. So we do actually find as well a lot of um, apprentices that are coming on have necessarily like gone down a different apprenticeship route or gone down a different career route and then gone, actually, no, I want to go in the fire, fire and security industry. Um, obviously, with us doing security as well um, and coming over. And actually, you will see a lot of um, apprentices that have maybe done um, a year in electrical or a year in, um, I don't know, um, physical, yeah, right, um, right, physical education and 
uh, therapists and all sorts, uh, they actually do change the career paths. So I would say the majority of apprentices coming on are in the 20s these days um, and a lot of females are coming through. Um, however, um, yeah, in September intake, we'll see a lot of um, 16 to 18 year olds. And there was, yeah, about 75 percent of the 130 uh, apprentices we took on last month were young uh, 16 to 18 year olds and yeah quite a few females so and um, we can already see the change that we're doing within the industry and um, but it doesn't stop here and we are working with sponsors and um, to gain more traction within the industry to bring the skill shortage and um, there's a it's around a 30,000 engineer uh, shortage we've got within the fire and security industry um, and the the apprenticeship engineer percentage is actually one percent of um apprentices to every engineer whereas in like other industries like electrical it's ten percent so yeah we are we've got a long way to go and a lot of work to be done but uh, with our current managing director and the team that we've got behind us now um our sole focus is on gain traction in the industry and closing that short that skill shortage which we can't do alone obviously mm. well thank you all for taking part in the empowering stem leaders panel discussion i really appreciate all of your insights on this incredibly important topic um i think we've had a really you know fascinating discussion and hopefully we're, we, we've gained some positives um on a topic that can be slightly controversial slightly challenging um, so thank you. And if anybody would like to find out more about how they can create a more inclusive and diverse workforce and recruitment process, then please feel free to reach out to our panellists on the platform. You can find out more. Um, and we also have the Women Talking Fire exhibitor booth in the exhibitor section of the website. So thank you all.